What's going on guys? In our quest to collect all the shells and gain access to all the systems, we need to keep expanding our arsenal. In today's video, we're going to write a bind shell in Python 3. Usually, after gaining access to a system, we'll listen on a port and have a reverse shell from the target connecting to our attacking system. Now, that might expose certain details about your location and IP address that you might not necessarily want to expose. That's where a bind shell comes into play. If you are able to do port forwarding on the target system, it's interesting to run a bind shell so we can then maybe go to a coffee shop and connect to our target from a completely anonymous location. Now let's jump into a demonstration of us doing just that. Alright guys, so I've just ran the bind shellcode on my server and I did port forwarding on port 4420. Now here on my Android device you can see I have PyDroid which allows you to run Python 3 code on your Android device. I've made a recent video about that that you can check out. Now let's open this up and here you can see this is all the code from our client about 20 lines of code and we have the IP address up here and as you can see I'm on a LTE connection so let's go ahead and run this code and there we go we get a shell right away now let's do some commands and yeah let's do a netstat so we can confirm that this is in fact a remote connection all right now let's find the port 4420 here so we can actually confirm the established connection and here we have it all right now let's exit out of this shell and take a look at the code So here we have the server code and you can see we go ahead and we listen for a client and then we accept the connection and basically we have a infinite loop that's going to break once we receive the quit command but on the server side you can see we're actually executing the commands which is the opposite of a reverse shell and then we simply send the output of that command over to the client who is actually controlling the target in this scenario and about 20 lines of code and the client is a little bit longer but pretty much the same thing we're gonna go ahead and connect to our server and then we'll prompt the user to input the command they want to execute on the target and then we can simply send that over and receive the response from that command so yeah short script uh, another shell to add to your arsenal in specific case and yeah that's gonna be it for today and I'll see you next time